Okay, as most of you know, the NCAA format is uh, we'll have an opening statement from Coach Hurley. We'll then uh, open it up for questions to the student athletes. When those are exhausted, we'll dismiss, dismiss them and uh, Coach Hurley will remain. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a, a tough pill to swallow. Uh, you know, we, we, we were finished with moral victories. Uh, you know, when we were at Kentucky and Wisconsin, so we, we had the mindset of coming in here trying to win this basketball game and advancing. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I was proud of my team and, and how we responded to the deficit we had uh, at halftime and came out really strong and, uh, and put ourselves back in the game. And they extended their lead again a number of different occasions. In the second half, we battled back. And, you know, happy for, you know, I know Xavier Ford wants to continue and play right now, and he's obviously disappointed that that his career at Buffalo ended today but you know he had a huge three-point shot had great numbers for us uh, you know played a terrific game you know I think it it came down to a couple of very crucial plays that that went against us you know the foul call uh, when they had seven seconds left on, on the shot clock uh, was a tough one uh, to accept in a tie game and then uh, you know and then you know you got to give credit to West Virginia and uh, and Phillips for making a, a terrific shot. Uh, it's hard to simulate what they do. They're really good. I don't know, you know, how much of this game would would have taken out of them physically and, and emotionally. But uh, they're the type of team that's physical and athletic enough uh, to win games. You know, moving forward in, in the tournament. Okay, uh, raise your hand for questions. I have Tanner on this side. Ashley's over here. There's Tim in the middle. Hold on. Let's, let's take you first. Go ahead. Tina, can you talk about uh, the press? It seemed like you broke the press, but then making the turnovers in the front court. Um, you know, can you just talk about how you viewed that, how that went, and, you know, what was the difficulty? Uh, yeah, they're very big and long and athletic, so the press is really good. And, you know, we broke it a few times in the first half, but we struggled as well. And, uh, you know, I take a lot of credit for the, some of the turnover that I had, you know. Tim in the middle here. Yeah, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Xavier, talk about that three, and then uh, what was sort of the mindset from there and stuff? Where do you think it got away from you guys? Um, the three, I felt like I had a lot of space to shoot the ball, and I'm confident I, I spent a lot of time working on that shot. And so I just let it go and it went in. And what was the second question? As you look back on it now, as you're thinking about where, where did you guys lose it there? Um, a couple plays got away from us. Like Coach just mentioned, that, that foul call was a tough one to swallow. And um, I think there was a point, I, I don't know how much time was left. i say about a minute and 15 seconds left. Uh, I inbound the ball, and Justin does a great job of getting open. It just rolls in and out. And I think that would have tied it at one point. So um, like you said, you got to credit West Virginia. They're a great team. and. You know, um, I'm just proud of my guys. We all went out here and battled and, and showed that we can compete with anybody. Other questions? Another one on our right. Just a follow-up, Shannon. So the, there were 12 turnovers in the first half, but in the second half you only made five turnovers as a team. Could you just talk about how settling down and what uh, was said at halftime and what you did right to bring us, put yourselves back in the game? Uh, yeah, coach got on us at halftime, you know, told us take care of the ball. We got to be more strong with it. So we came out in the second half more composed and try to play with more poise. Let me just, just elaborate a little further on that with Shannon. In terms of their press, first of all, they're averaging 20 turnovers a game. So for us to have 17, it's not a, a shocker for me. Um, th there's no way for us to, and we don't face teams like this usually that are, that are physical and trapping and, um, and, and that are relentless the way they play their defense. Um, so, I mean, th they had a lot to do with those. And, and also, we tried to simulate the speed and the pace they would come at us, but it's, it's hard to simulate that. And, and I think our guys, as the game wore on, started to figure out how hard they needed to cut, how we needed to attack it. Uh, but initially, in, in the early stages of the game, it's just, you know, it's hard to, to figure that out, you know, as a player. Uh, it's just not something we face very often. Okay, we continue with the student athletes. Here's Rusty on our right side. Rusty Miller from AP. Um, you played great teams this year. Had you ever seen anything as physical as that? They were, it was like hand-to-hand -hand combat out there at times. 
Um, like you mentioned, we play great teams. Uh, I'll say that's probably uh, the second most physical. Kentucky's real physical as well. Um, and they're twice as big at every position. But that was a real physical game. Um, we all laid it out there. And I'm sure everybody's body is tired. My body is tired. And as well, I think it took a lot out of them too. So, Shannon, would you respond? Uh, yeah, I agree with Xavier. They're like the second most physical team we play. But they're real fast and real big. So my, my body is tired as well. And I know a few of their bodies are tired as well too. OK, on our right side. Xavier, can you talk just what's it been like for you being part of this run up until today and, and you know, culminating your career with what you guys have accomplished the last couple of weeks? Uh, <clears throat> it's been great for me. Um, I'm just so proud of my guys. I'm so proud of this man sitting right next to me and Jaron Skeet and Lamonte Bearden really grew up. He's not a freshman no more. And Justin Moss went from not even being noticed to being the MAC player of the year and Raheem Johnson who grew up and Rodell Wigginton and Will Regan, who took a back seat in his game to, to be mature and just to show what how good of a person he is. It's, it's just been a great run for me, and I'm just happy for the city of Buffalo that we're known for something associated with winning. Um, we got the MAC championship, and like I said a couple days ago, a lot of guys doubted us and didn't think that we would do anything. And for us to get out here and just make a national stand, just to let the know, let the world know that we can play. If you had told us three weeks ago or even at the beginning of the season that the president would pick us to win in the first round in the NCAA tournament, a lot of people would have laughed in your face. So I'm just proud of these guys. And I, I love Coach Hurley to death. He's done a, so much for me and everybody at University of Buffalo. So we just want to thank the, the university and the wonderful community for everything they've done. Any more questions for the student athletes in the back or on our right? For both of you guys, can you just talk about the toughness level in the second half, down nine, you weren't playing well, you missed a couple shots you normally make. A team that's playing in the first NCAA tournament might have packed it in and kind of conceded it, and you guys didn't. Can you just talk about the way you guys finish the game? We'll start with Shannon. Uh, I feel like it starts with our coach, you know, Hurley. He had a lot of passion. He came in the locker room, ripped us. I feel like most coaches would have pat us on the back and be like, all right, y'all hanging in there, so you guys are doing well. He came in the locker room, ripped us, got into us. You know, and we just responded. And uh, Xavier. Um, we're, like, like Shannon just mentioned, we're always going to be aggressive. This isn't the first time we faced adversity. Um, we've been down a few times in the season. So we just knew that we would get in there. And eventually, a couple of the shots that we missed in the first half would eventually fall. And we had some success. We just came up short. Other questions? There's team in the middle here. Just one last one for uh, Shannon. Did, did you actually talk to Bearden a little bit to, to sort of calm down a little bit? He seemed really uh, in another gear there early, almost out of control at times. Yeah, uh, that's one thing we both do. Like, sometimes I'm out of gear, he'll come talk to me, and I'll talk to him. So we try to communicate to each other, you know, because the ball's in our hand most of the game. So we like to control the tempo ourselves. Okay, we've got time for a couple more. There's one in back. On our right. X, how, how much better do you feel you left this program, or you're leaving this program than when you came in four years ago? And what's to credit for that in, in that aspect? Um, I feel great. A lot of guys are returning next year. And a lot of these guys are very talented players. I feel like we have a lot of high major players on a mid-major team. Um, I'm so proud of everybody. And I just, again, just want to thank Coach Hurley. He was a big part of my success. and. Coach Hurley and Coach Levi Watkins and Coach Nados and Ben Wood and, and um, giving me a chance. I know when I first got here a couple years ago, 2011, um, people really didn't know about Buffalo like that outside of the MAC conference. And we got Coach Hurley, and you know his name brings in a lot of press and media. And he always was a great person and did a great job with us and preparing us to leave the world as men and to handle adversity when we play. So I'm just happy and, and confident that. Next year, you know, the team will be real good. And now that we, we went out here and put on for a, a national team and national TV, they can see that there's good players in Buffalo. OK, one final question from anybody? OK, we will dismiss our student athletes. Thank you.
Okay, uh, continuing with questions, here's one in the front for Coach Hurley. Yeah, Bobby, what did you see on the off the ball foul on Moss with 2.10 to go there? I mean, I, I just can't really get into it other than in this type of game, at, at that point in the game, uh, in, in a possession that really wasn't going anywhere. You, it was just surprising. Questions? Here's one in the middle there. Uh, regardless of the result, you, you go 2-3 and you tip the momentum there. What went into that decision and uh, why do you think that was effective at that point? I mean, we, we talked about it as a coach and staff playing some, some zone because I, I knew our guys would be expending tremendous energy trying to break their pressure. And, you know, it's for as good as West Virginia is in a lot of areas, they're, they're – uh, they're, they're not a great three-point shooting team. And, you know, despite Phillip hitting the big three, it was something that, you know, we felt we needed to do. And the only thing you worry about when you're playing zone is can you rebound? Because, uh, you know, I think one of the times we went zone, it, it didn't work out because we couldn't finish the possession with a rebound. Okay, we continue in the back row. Coach, as the game went on, it, it seemed like your ball screen defense got a lot better. Was, was there an adjustment necessarily? Because they came into the game pretty good at that, and you talked about that earlier in the week. Well, Staten's, you know, really good out there, and you know, we uh, <clears throat> we did better down the stretch, and you know, they, um, you know, we tried to suck in as much as we can with, with, with our guys off the ball, so that you know we would try and limit his driving lanes and, and their ability to uh, to break us down in ball screens. Okay, Tim in the middle aisle there, please. Yeah, Coach, uh, just straight up, though, did the amount of fouls called today, did that, did that take away from the rhythm, the, the flow of this game, the tempo? I mean, what's, what's your view of that? I mean, I don't think that that was the case. I mean, we knew that it, it would be that kind of game just based on the number of fouls that West Virginia's committed this year, and, and we're a very aggressive team as well. So, uh, and, and, you know, we at, at one point in the year were second nationally and made free throws because of Justin Moss's you know, physicality and our guards attacking the rim. Uh, you know, for us, you know, we, we did some things uncharacteristic of what we've been doing, particularly at the free throw line. Usually, you know, we, we, we do a better job of making free throws, especially in the first half. I thought that contributed, you know, to, uh, to us being behind the way we were. And then also just, you know, missing some layups in the first half. And, you know, uh, we just, we can't afford to do that against, you know, teams like West Virginia. Other questions? Here's uh, on the right side, over right here. What was your message to the team at halftime? And also, what do you attribute some of the, you know, the poor play in the first five, six minutes to uh, from your team? I just felt like, you know, just getting our feet under us in this type of game, no matter how many big games you prepared for, you know, you played in, there's no true preparation uh, other than experience and being in these kinds of games. And then as fast and as hard as West Virginia plays contributes to us not playing at our best early. Um, and then we just talked about, you know, just doing the things that we've done all year, like make layups, you know, hit your free throws, and it, it would have been a one possession game at halftime. And, uh, you know, we started doing a better job. And I loved how we started the half. And in games like this, if you don't come out well to start, you know, the teams like West Virginia could put you away, and we, we jumped right back in the game. Other questions? Here's one in the back row again. Coach, it seems like whenever I ask the guys about their character, they attribute it to you. Can you talk about their toughness level, especially in the second half, and where that kind of comes from, and if it really does come from you, and how you kind of give that to them? I, I, I got, I've received and <laughs> gotten way too much credit for us being in the position we're in than I deserve because I've I just been fortunate to have great kids. And when you have kids like Shannon Evans that, you know, plays with his heart, and, uh, and Xavier Ford, everything he's been through and to have the season he's had for me and Lamonte Bearden for, you know, some of the passes I'm sure he wished he could have back. He, for a freshman, man, he's so good with the ball and, and, and such a playmaker. And Justin Moss, who, you know, hasn't been himself and is still not himself, but he's, you know, he, he just was a warrior and gave everything he had. So it's really the type of kids that, that I'm blessed to, to coach here. In our third row right here. Coach, now that the season's over, do you think you'll really have time to kind of reflect back and really think about just how much this 
this one season has kind of meant for this program as a whole? Do you think now you can kind of start to reflect on it now that the game's finally Yeah, over? I mean, this is, this is a heartbreaking loss because we, we didn't come in here satisfied, you know, being a champion of our league. And, you know, we felt we had a team that, that could win games in the tournament, and it didn't play out that way. We were a, a couple of possessions here or there from that happening. Um, but ultimately, I'm, I'm excited about the enthusiasm about our program and what we're doing and the excitement that, that Buffalo had uh, to back us here. Uh, it, it's, it, was, it felt great, you know, and, and it's something to build on with, with so many returning players coming back. Okay, we have time for two or three more on our right side here. As you mentioned, you have a lot coming back next year, but how much will you miss Will and Xavier and, and you know, talk about what you need to do to replace them in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, th those guys in their own way are great leaders and uh, just in terms of setting the standard of how to work and, and how to, uh, you know, Will Regan's a tremendous worker, Xavier Ford, same thing. Uh, they brought so much to the table w when we had them, so it, it, it's hard to replace guys like that. But um, we, we've, we've set the, the standard and, and the expectations about what we're about and we have guys now that have gained invaluable experience, you know, being in this kind of game, in this setting, with this kind of pressure, um, and, and handled themselves, conducted themselves in the best possible way. Okay, final question in the corner on the left. Bobby, West Virginia had the ball for well over a minute there before they got that final three-pointer that pretty much sealed it. Could you have played any better defense in that 60, 70 seconds than what you did? Yeah, I mean, we were, it, it was a two-point game, and, and there was no decision as far as I was concerned about whether to, to foul. I mean, it was, you know, we were going to play it out and, and, and need to get a stop and, and hope that we could get the ball back and, and have a chance to tie it or go ahead. And, I mean, we closed out, you know, as good as you could close out to, to a shooter. And, and, and he made, you know, he made, you know, Philip made a great, you know, contested three-point shot. So. Coach, congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.